using intercepts to graph linear equations. This video will help you identify the x and y intercepts of a graph and graph linear equations by plotting the intercepts. Identifying the x and y intercepts. Let's start with some definitions. The x-intercept of a graph occurs where the line crosses the x-axis. The y-intercept of a graph occurs where the line crosses the y-axis. Now let's go ahead and take a look at an example here and you can see what the x and y intercept look like. So I've graphed this equation here, x plus 2y equals 4. And so the intercepts are simply where this graph crosses the x and y axis. So if we take first a look at the x-axis here, we can see that this graph is crossing the x-axis right here. The line crosses at a positive 4. And so that's all the x-intercept is. Now if I want to identify that value, I make sure I write this as an ordered pair. So over here, if we're looking at the x-intercept, I want to write this as an ordered pair. Because anytime we're talking about a point on this graph, it takes two coordinates or two pieces of information to identify that point. And so that point, the x-intercept, occurs when x is 4 and then the y value is 0 since we're neither moving up or down when we're crossing that x-axis. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the, the y-intercept. This graph crosses the y-axis right here. And so to identify that point, again, I'm going to need an ordered pair. And so that happens now when the x value is 0. We're moving neither left nor right. That's kind of what puts us on the y-axis. And then we're up 2 in the y direction. So my y-intercept is the point 0, 2. And that's all the intercepts are, just simply where these graphs cross the 2x. So an important thing to notice is that the x-intercept occurs when the y-value is 0. And the y-intercept occurs when the x-value is 0. And that makes sense, because if we're looking at the x-intercept, you know, where this thing is going to cross the x-axis, we're moving neither up or down in the y-direction. That's how we end up on that axis. And then again, over here, the y-intercept occurs when x is 0. That's because we're moving neither left nor right, which is kind of puts us right on that y-axis. And so what we're going to do in the next examples here is we're going to graph using the intercepts, which means we are going to use these zeros. Uh, the x-intercept occurs when y is 0. y-intercept occurs when x is 0. We're going to use these zeros to actually graph these equations, and it's going to make it actually quite simple to do. Now let's take a look at an example that will help you understand how to use the intercepts to graph a linear equation. Example 2, we're asked to graph this equation x plus 2y equals 4. Well, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to find these intercepts. And remember, the x-intercept occurs when the y-value in our coordinates, when the y-value is 0. And then the y-intercept occurs That occurs when our x value is 0. So these are the two points we're going to plug in. We're, well, we're going to plug the zeros in and find these two points. So let's find the x-intercept. That occurs when y is 0. So if I plug a 0 in for y into that equation, I'd have x plus 2 times 0 equals 4. And so you can see this 2 times 0 is going to drop right out. And there's our point. x has to equal 4. Uh, let's take a look now at the y-intercept. So that occurs when x is 0. So then I have this equation, 0 plus 2y equals 4. And so, again, the 0 drops right out of there. That term drops right out of there. And I'm left with this simple equation, 2y equals 4. And you can just take a look at that and see that y needs to be 2. So a lot of times, you know, now we have two points. And so we can go ahead and, and graph these two points. My first point was uh, over 4, up 0. My next point was over 0, up 2. And so I have two points. Now I do need a third point, but for the most part now, let's just go ahead and, and graph this. Let's graph this line first. So you can see that using a 0 for y and a 0 for x really simplifies graphing these equations. It's because when we take 0 and multiply it by something, we usually get 0. And a lot of the times, these terms will just drop right out. So you, sometimes you, people will refer to this graphing using the intercepts. They refer to this as called finding the zeros. And so finding the zeros means we're just finding these zeros because they're so easy to, 
They're so easy to plug into the equation. And a lot of times you can do this mentally. You know, if you have a little bit of experience, you could have taken this first one and say, okay, we're going to plug a zero in for y. And if we came back up here and looked at my original equation, plugging zero in for y, you know, usually I'll just take my hand or my finger and cover this up. But that term is going to drop right out when we plug a zero in for y and leave us with that x equals 4. So you can kind of just mentally take a look at these sometimes and find these intercepts. Same thing over here, when we found the y-intercept, we could plug a 0 in for x, and that term is going to drop out, and we could kind of look at this simple equation, 2y equals 4, and we could see that, yeah, y needs to be 2 to come up with, our, with a solution there. So a lot of times with these intercepts and plugging these zeros in, you can just simply mentally calculate these two points. Now, two points is never enough to, uh, to graph an equation. What we need to do now is just do a quick check make sure we didn't make a mistake. So we, let's put a third point in there and make sure it ends up on this line. So let's say uh, I put a value of 2 in for x. So here's our checkpoint. If I put a 2 in for x, I'd have this 2 plus 2y equals 4. And you could see that y is going to need to be 1. If I put a value of 1 in there for y, then I'd have 2 plus 2 is 4. So my y value is 1. So let's go ahead and check this point. Over 2 up one there's my point right there and it's pretty close you know when I drew this I didn't have a straight edge but that's close enough for me to know that I've gotten my points in the right spot here and I'm confident that I got the correct graph now it's time to check your understanding of graphing finding the intercepts go ahead and pause your video player now and answer this practice question when you're done hit play to see how you did question two we're asked to graph this equation 2x minus 3y equals 6 Okay, and we're going to try to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So the first thing we'll do here is we'll look, make my t-table. And so let's start with the x-intercept. Now remember, the x-intercept occurs when the y-value is 0. So let's see, if I plug a 0 in for y here, this term, when I plug 0 in here for y, this negative 3y term is going to become 0, or essentially drop right out of that equation. And so I'm left with this. 2x equals 6. Well, for that to be a true statement, x is going to have to be 3. So there's my first point. Now let's find the y-intercept. Remember, the y-intercept occurs when the x value is 0. So let's see. I'm going to plug 0 now up here for x. And when I put a 0 in for that term, that 2 times 0 is going to be 0. Or that essentially, that term is going to drop right out. And I'm left with a statement negative 3y equals 6. Now if you can look at that, and I can look at that and say, you know, negative 3 times negative 2 is going to give us positive 6, so there's my other point. If you couldn't see that, then let's just go ahead and plug that in there or solve this equation. We've got this little mini equation, negative 3y equals 6, divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, y equals negative 2. So either way, mentally, if you can just see that that was negative 2, or go ahead and just solve it. All right, so there are my two points. Uh, over 3 up 0 which is going to be right here for my x-intercept and my y-intercept over 0 down negative 2 okay let's go ahead and graph that okay so let's find a checkpoint now so I want to come up with 6 so I'm thinking maybe 10 minus 3 nope that won't do it that would be 7 um, maybe 12 minus 6. 12 minus 6. So here's kind of what I was thinking. You know, here's my equation. I'm going to try to show you how I'm coming up with this because we really are kind of guessing and checking to try to find something that's going to work out nice. And so I was thinking, what can I subtract here? I know I have a subtraction problem. What can I subtract to get to 6? You know, and I thought, well, 9 minus 3, well, it'd be hard to make this term equal 9. And then it occurred to me maybe 12 minus 6 would work to give me 6. And I can make this 2x term a 12, and I can make this 3y term a 6. So here's kind of what I was thinking. It's 2. I want this to be 12. So 2 times 6 would give me 12 there. And then 3 times, uh, sorry, 3 times 2. So 3 times 2, and that would equal 6. I kind of did this mentally, but I'll show you how I do this because this is going to be helpful. So now this one is 12. Now this one is 6. And that's going to work. So let's see. That gives me the point, the ordered pair then. 6, 2 is my ordered pair. So let's see. Over 6 
up to that point is right there now my graph wasn't perfect because I didn't have a straight edge but that's right in line with my other point so I'm confident in this graph so now let's go ahead and practice another one notice the equation is organized a little differently the before I had it in standard form which was something x something y equals some number this form right here is called slope intercept form and we'll get more into that later on but we can still graph this equation by finding the intercepts. So go ahead and pause your video player and, and graph this equation using the intercepts. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Okay, so again, I'm looking for the x and y intercepts here. Make a t-table. So the y, or so the x-intercept occurs when y is zero. So let's see, if I put a zero up in here for y, then I have this statement, zero equals two x minus four. And we could solve this equation, or we could just take a look here and say, hey, if I can make this term equal to 4, I'll get 0. Well, x value of 2 would make that equal to 4. You know, 2 times 2 would give me 4, and then 4 minus 4 would give me 0. So there's my x value there. And again, I'm just trying to show you how to do this mentally to save yourself a little bit of time here. Okay, now the other thing I want to do is find the y-intercept, and that's going to occur when x is 0. And so we're going to put a 0 up in here for x and you can see that 2x is dropping right out for us and we get our answer right away y is equal to negative 4 so now let's plot these two points over 2 up 0 and then over 0 down negative 4 okay now let's check a point hopefully you tried in this one to come up with something that worked out nice um, let's see 2 minus 4 there's a lot of ones that would work out real nice in here you know if I picked a an x value of 1 then I would have this y equals 2 times 1 minus 4 uh, let's see 2 times 1 is 2, 2 minus 4 is going to give us negative 2, so there's our point 1, negative 2 as a checkpoint. So over 1, down negative 2 right here. Again, not perfectly on my graph, but still right in line with my other points. So I'm confident in my answer here. Pause your video player and work question 4 when you're done. Hit play to see how you did. Okay, so make a t-table. First thing we'll do is find the... Uh, x-intercept that occurs when y is 0 so let's see then I'd have 0 equals 1 fifth x minus 2 oh that one's pretty ugly I don't see maybe you could see you know I've had a lot of practice and I can see that if I put a 10 in there it work but if you can't see that let's go ahead and solve this one so let's see I'm trying to get x all alone so I would add 2 to both sides and so then you would have 2 equals 1 fifth x now I want to get rid of the multiplication of 1 fifth. So I multiply by the reciprocal, which is 5 over 1. And 5 over 1 is just 5. So on the left side, I'm just going to multiply by 5. And so you can see on the right side, my common factors of 5 dividing out, leaving me basically with just x. Left side, 5 times 2 is 10. So there's my point, 10, 0. Hmm, that's going to be off the graph. We'll get to that in a second. Let's go ahead and find the next point. Okay, so now I want to find the y-intercept, which occurs when x is 0. So if I put a 0 in for x, this is going to be a lot easier. If I put a 0 up in here for x, I'd have 1 fifth times 0, which is just 0. So essentially that term is going to drop right out and tell us that y has to be negative 2. Now let's get to that problem of the 10, 0. It's going to go off the graph. So what we might want to do when we get a point like this that's going off the graph we could either find another couple points, or we could just kind of alter the graph, and instead of going by ones here, we could just count by twos and, and make this happen as well. So this is the point, if I'm counting by twos, you know, let's come over here on the graph, 10 in the x direction, which I can't go, but let's say that every time I make a movement here, I'll count it as twos. So this would be two, four, six, eight, ten. And so here's my point ten. And on the other way, then, 0, negative 2, which means I'm going to count by 2 is going the other way as well. i got to be consistent. So this would be down 2, would be right there. And there's my graph. And so let's go ahead and 
graph that thing. Okay, now let's get a checkpoint. So here was y equals 1 fifth x minus 2. Now, remember, if you watched my video before, we want to pick for the cluttered variable here, which is x, and we also want to pick multiples of 5, because if we pick multiples of 5, that, that fraction is going to divide right out. So I'm going to pick an x value of 5. And so here's what that would look like. y equals 1 fifth. And my x value is 5. I'll write that as a fraction. 5 over 1 minus 2. And you can see my 5's dividing right out, which would leave me with y equals 1 minus 2. y equals negative 1. Okay? So now i got to go over 5, but remember I'm counting by 2. So I'd say 2, 4, and then halfway would be 5. So 5 is right here, and then down 1, which would only be halfway. So right about there is my point. And even, again, my graph isn't perfect there, but you can see that that's right in line with my other point. So I know I've got this, this graph, graph correctly. Now, the only other thing that I would want to do is make sure I made a note on this scale. I would either, you know, cross these things out and put that I'm counting by twos. So I'd say one mark equals two units, and that this is the point 10, 0. So that way I could communicate to somebody that was reading my graph that I counted by twos on this particular graph. Okay, so finally we're going to end up here by taking a look at the graph of equations where one of the variables is gone. Uh, I'll do this example here where y equals negative 3, and then I'll have you practice one here where you have x equals 5. But notice in both of these cases, one of the variable is kind of dropped out. So what happens with these linear equations? When I have something like this, let's say I had, and this is totally off topic, just a side example here. Say I had 3x plus 3y equals 10. When both variables are involved in the equation, what that tells us is there's actually restrictions on both values for x and y that are going to be, you know, that will work for solutions. If we have a case where one of those variables is absent, that means there are absolutely no restrictions at all on that variable. So in this first graph here, y equals negative 3, the only restrictions that are happening are on the values of y. x can be any number I want it to be. And so I can come over here with my x value, and since x is not part of that equation, x can be anything I want. So I can choose any single number that I want to choose. Um, I could choose 105 or 275, whatever, but I probably want to stay on the page here. I want to stay in my graph, so I'll choose 1, 2, 3, 5 as my values there for x because it doesn't really matter. There are no restrictions on x. But notice also in this equation, there are some really very stringent restrictions on what y can be. It tells me here that y has to always be basically negative 3. So no matter what value of x I choose, it doesn't matter. y is always going to be negative 3. And so that's how we're going to get our points for this. Sorry, this was y there. That's how we're going to get our points for this. So let's take a look, let's take a look now and see what this kind of looks like when we graph it. So the first one I have, x was 1, y was negative 3. The next one I have, x is 2, but y is still negative 3. And then 3, y is still negative 3. And then 5, y is still negative 3. You can see where all these points are going to end up. What we get here is we get this perfectly horizontal line for this graph of y equals negative 3. So anytime we have a graph y equals something, we're always going to end up with a sort of horizontal line because there are going to be really st stringent restrictions on what y can be. x can be anything, which gives us basically all of these points along this horizontal line. Go ahead now and pause your video player and graph this next equation, x equals 5. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Okay, so let's take a look here. Here it's kind of the reverse of that. Here we have some really stringent restrictions on x. x has always got to be 5. It can't be anything else. But for y, there are no restrictions at all. y can be any number we choose. So again, I'll just pick some real nice values for y. And there are my points. So let's see. x is always going to be 5. And y, we picked 1, 2, 3. You can see that we're going to get a vertical line. And so that will always be the case. Anytime we have a value x equals some number, we're going to get a vertical line. And anytime we have y 
equal to some number, we're always going to get a horizontal line. 